everyone. Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Sometimes you just want to go out exploring and you don't want to bring a whole lot of stuff. I'm just talking the essentials. Maybe your phone to snap a couple pictures, your ID, maybe a credit card, possibly a lip chap. You don't want to bring a huge purse. And if you do bring a huge purse, you're likely to fill that huge purse. And then we all wonder why we have sore shoulders and back problems. <laughs> so the answer to that is the cute crossbody purse. We're gonna make one today using 24-7 by Lion Brand. And we'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. If you're new here, you won't know how much I love 24-7 cotton by Lion Brand. It's literally my favorite. We've made a ton of projects here on the show using 24-7 and I can't use it enough. Today's latest iteration is cute it's shiny i've got a real fairy tale theme going i mean i love wandering through the woods you guys know that i had to add a little toadstool to my purse but of course you can decorate your purse however you want in fact we've made so many appliques here on the show we've got an entire playlist linked in the description box down below so check those out you can make any one of them using the same cotton as you do your purse. I love 24-7 cotton. It's a mercerized, it's 100% cotton. It's got this lovely sheen. It comes in a zillion colors. We'll link to Lion Brand in the description box down below and the pinned comment so you can pop over and check out all the colors they've got. And you can make a purse that suits your theme or your personality or wherever you feel like you might go wandering. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. We'll head on into the craft table and we will stitch up an adorable little crossbody purse with a bit of a fairy tale theme together. <laughs> For my purse, I have three different colors of 24 seven cotton by Lion Brand. I've got red, aqua and white, and I'm gonna be making the majority of my purse out of aqua. For the purse and strap together, you need around 100 yards of a size four medium weight cotton yarn. Now you can make the strap a different color, you can make the whole thing the same color. And then remember, if you're going to be adding an applique like I am, budget on around 15 yards in total of yarn for your applique. You may need a little more, you may need a little less. I'm using a five millimeter hook today. This is also known as an H or a eight. You're gonna want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle a measuring tape is quite handy for this project. So is a stitch marker to help keep track of the first stitch of your row, because we will be working in the round. And to close up your purse, I recommend a button and a needle and thread to attach it with. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're starting at the bottom of the purse. We're going to begin with a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to chain 18. Once you have 18 chains, we're going to be using the half double crochet stitch. We're going to skip the first chain from the hook, find the second chain, and we're going to half double crochet into that chain three times. Half double crochet into each of the next 15 chains. And that should leave you with one chain at the end. Once you've half double crocheted into each of those 15 chains, you should have one chain left at the end. Work three half double crochets into that chain. And now we're going to work along the underside of those 15 stitches. I'm going to work over top of my short tail. Make sure you skip that last chain because you've already used it. You're going to half double crochet into the bottom of each of those 15 chains. Now 15 stitches. And you just want to make sure that you're getting the bottom of those chain. So if you use the top chain or loop like I did on the way across, then you're grabbing two loops when you're going back. If you used two loops going across the top, then you've only got one loop to go 
as you cross back. Either way, you want to make sure you've got 15 half double crochet stitches on either side of your foundation chain row, and it'll look something like that. So you see how each of those stitches sits opposite the other stitch. Once you've half double crocheted 15 stitches all the way back across the bottom of your foundation chain row, in total you'll have 36 stitches for round or row one. Now we are not joining our rows with a slip stitch, we are not chaining one to begin a new row, we are working in the round. So the first stitch of what was row one becomes the first place you work stitch one of row two. So to begin row two, we're going to put two half double crochets into what was the first stitch of row one. And here's where your stitch marker comes in handy. You're going to mark the first stitch. So of those two stitches, that's the first one. That is stitch one of row two. You're going to mark the first stitch of each row going forward. That will help keep track of having gone all the way around. Makes it easier to count too. We're going to work two half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now you're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next 15. Once you've worked a half double crochet into each of the next 15, that brings you up to the second curve. You're going to work two half double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that should leave you with 15 stitches left in row two to complete a half double crochet in each of the next 15 stitches that will finish up row two and will be up to 42 stitches in total for the end of row two. Then we're going to take a little measurement. I've completed a half double crochet in each of the remaining 15 stitches that completes row two. I have 42 stitches, so 15 across each side, six across each bend. There's my stitch marker marking what was the first stitch of the row and my last stitch ended right before it. So I know that I'm on track. Now we're going to take a quick measurement. So you might want to lay it down flat. This is the end of the increasing. You should be approximately five and a half inches from edge to edge and about one and a half, a little over one and a half inches wide. So in metric, that's 14 centimeters across and approximately four and a half centimeters wide. So that's where you should be at the end of row two. For row three onward, we are going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. We are no longer increasing. So I take my stitch marker out. I like to work the first couple of stitches of the row. So it's just one half double crochet per stitch now. I work the first two stitches and then I back up and I put my stitch marker back in place on the first stitch of the row. I know that's the first stitch of row three and you can see that it's level with all the other stitches that came before it on row two. That's why I find it very helpful to use a stitch marker. That way when I get all the way back around I know I've completed row three and I'm not going to uh, miss sort of counting out the wrong side if I have to put it down and go away. Every row will have 42 stitches in it. And now we are aiming for a length of approximately seven inches. So I'm gonna get a few rows in here, just working half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. You should find that the bottom of your little purse is going to start to bend into a little bit of a, a bowl shape. If it doesn't right away, it's okay. It just means that you've got slightly looser tension than me, but you are no longer increasing. So you continue to work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around for a total of 42 stitches in row three and row four and row five and onwards and the bottom of your bag will turn into a little bowl. 
Remember, you are not joining the rows with a slip stitch. You are not chaining one to start a new row. You are just constantly crocheting around and around and around. Use that stitch marker on the first stitch of each row to help keep track of where you are. I've just finished my sixth row. Here's my little stitch marker, keeping track of the first stitch of my row. You'll notice that your stitch marker kind of moves a little bit with every first stitch of the row. Don't worry about that. It's just because you're working in the round. It's kind of a funny thing that happens, but as long as you still have 42 stitches and you're marking the first stitch of every row, then you're on track. The easiest way to measure is to fold it in half. You'll see that you've got the stitches that sit opposite each other down here. So that is the middle of your foundation chain row right there. And you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So you know you've done six rows. I like to count on the side with the stitch marker because I know that's the first stitch of the row and I know I've completed an entire row. You should be at around five centimeters, two inches or a little over top of that. I think this is about two and a quarter from top to folded bottom. And in centimeters, that's almost six centimeters. So what we're going for is seven inches. You're probably going to want to do at least 20 rows around and around. So we've already done six. You want to do another 12, sorry, 14 to get up to row 20. Then you're gonna measure it from top to bottom. It should be approximately seven inches. And if you need it to be a little taller because you have maybe a deeper phone or you wanna carry a few more things, you can add a few more rows. That's not gonna change the pattern. And if you need it to be a little shorter than that, maybe you want something a little bit smaller for say a smaller person, then you can make it fewer rows than that. So this is really where you wanna keep your measuring tape handy and maybe just kind of keep trying it on against your own hip if it's for you, or just keep measuring the length from the very bottom up to the top until it gets to a height that you like. I'm aiming for 20 rows, but you can use as many rows as you need. All right, I'll see you at the end of row 20. I've completed 20 rows. Now you'll notice that my stitch marker is all the way back here and if I count from the bottom all the way up the side to where my last stitch of row 20 is, I'll have 20 rows. But it's off balance. If you count from here up to here, you'll only have 19. So what you want to do when you've reached the end of your last row is half double crochet in each stitch across to the edge of your purse. And this should be in direct alignment with that first stitch we made all the way back here in row 1. So for me, that's around 16 stitches, but it could be different for you, depending on how many rows you did. Either way, you wanna wind up directly above the first stitch of row one. Once you've worked all the way back to the stitch, which is in direct alignment with the first stitch of row one, that should leave you, when you've got your purse flattened, with three little stitches going around the corner. So one, two, right on the exact edge, and three. 18 stitches backwards, you should have the same thing over here. So this would be your 18th stitch away from where your hook is now, and then one, two, three. Whether you're working left-handed or right-handed, it doesn't matter. You should have to be, be able to identify the three stitches on either end when flattened. We're going to work a little fold now that will kind of just create a little bit of a flap for the top of our purse so nothing falls out. We're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to work backwards across those 18 stitches there. So what you're doing is working a half double crochet in each stitch back to the 18th stitch, leaving these three stitches open on the end. So I like to look at it like three on this side, three on this side, but you're going to work across 18 stitches. Eighteen stitches back, so I've half double crocheted in each stitch all the way back, and if I flatten my purse, that leaves one, two, three, one, two, three. So three little stitches, one, two, three on the side. So whether you're working left-handed or right-handed, when you flatten your purse, you should have a little tiny sort of three-stitch opening on either side. 
chain one, turn, and half double crochet back across all of those 18 stitches. You should have two rows now, 18 stitches long each, of half double crochet, and you're going to chain one, turn, and half double crochet in each stitch across twice more. So you'll end up with a little flap that is four rows high. At the end of your fourth row of half double crochet, working back and forth, you should have a nice little flap that will close over the top of your purse. We're going to put a little built-in loop, and of course we're going to sew our button in here. But first, we want to just even up the edges of everything. So at the end of row 24, or your fourth row of half double crochet back and forth, you're going to chain one, but you're not going to turn. Instead, we're going to work four nice, easy-going single crochets down the edge of our flap. So that's about one per edge row. So I'm just going to slip my hook in right around that last half double crochet of the row, and then find the next row, and half double crochet around it. And I'm not crocheting very tightly. And then the next row, I'm kind of sort of splitting the stitches or grabbing the whole stitch. It doesn't really matter here. What we're just doing is kind of making things a little tidy. There we go, not too tight. You don't want to squish things. And here's my last row. There we go. And then you're going to single crochet into the same stitch that that first row was anchored in. Again, not very tight. And you should have now a little smooth edge running down the side of your flap. You're going to single crochet now in every stitch all the way around to the other side of your purse flap, and then we're going to single crochet up that edge too. When you get all the way around to the other side of your little flap, you're going to single crochet in the same stitch that that first stitch is anchored in, and then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to single crochet into the edge, either working around or through that last half double crochet, all the way up, just four even single crochet stitches. There we go. And then you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across to the ninth stitch. So single crochet in each of those first nine stitches across the top of your little flap. There you go, and that should put you more or less in the middle. Depending on the size of the button you have or that you're going to use, you don't want to make a very big loop because it's going to come undone on you. So because we're using a size 4 weight yarn and a 5 millimeter hook, I'd say 4 chains is enough. You're going to single crochet now into each of the remaining stitches across. Make sure that isn't too big. So if you want to take a moment and just pass your button through it, go ahead and do that. And then single crochet in each of those remaining stitches right back to what was the end of row 24, right where we chained one and worked down the side of our little flap. Just slip stitch into that first stitch of this little tiny edging row, and that is it. You can fasten off your yarn. And then take a moment to weave that tail in on the inside of your little flap. Maybe up here. Either way, you want to work back and forth through those stitches a few times because you want to make sure that this tail does not want to come undone.
And there we go. Purse and flap complete. Now you're going to grab your button and your needle and thread and we're just going to stitch our button into place before we do anything else. Before we do anything else, we want to add our button to the front of our purse. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your purse is laying nice and flat and that the flap part of your purse is evenly aligned between the two edges so that when it closes, it's even in the middle. Then you're going to take your button. Now I'm using a button that's basically invisible against my purse on purpose. It's about an inch across, two and a half centimeters. So I'm just going to demonstrate placement with this purple button here so you can see it a little better. You want to make sure your flap is folded neatly. You are not turning down or creasing or pulling it across the top of your flattened open purse. And then just place your button approximately where you want it. Uh, basically, the bottom of your loop is going to pull against the sewing of the two dots of your, your two open holes of your button. So where you sew it, the loop will catch right at the bottom of where your two buttonholes align. So you want to make sure that you align the middle two holes of your button right about where the bottom of your loop is going to sit. Then thread up your needle and thread. I like to double th knot, knot my yarn, so I should say my thread is pulled through and then doubled up and I knot the end. I'm going to anchor my yarn on the back or the inside of a loop. And then I'm just going to sew the whole thing in and out, back and forth through the inside of the fabric of my purse four or five times, maybe six, just to make sure that button is on there nice and snug. So here's my little button. I've sewn it on. It's sort of a transparent button, which is kind of cool. You're going to finish your last button stitch by bringing your needle and thread to the inside of your purse. And then you're just going to knot it a couple of times and then snip your thread. And that takes care of the button. Give it a test. Great. So my button is on. My button loop works. It's easy to get on and off. And that is the purse part done. Let's put on a strap. Now we're going to make a strap and we're going to join it to the three stitches on either side of the edge of our purse so that it sits out from the little flap that buttons down in the front. You can join this as you go. If you need help with that, we have a strap that's very similar to this one that we built into our Primrose water bottle holder, or you can just do it the simple way like I'm going to, which is to chain a length and half double crochet all the way back and forth three times. So that's all I'm going to do. Because I'm sewing mine on, I'm going to leave myself a nice long length of tail, make a slip knot on my hook, and I'm going to chain 131. Now, I've chosen 131 because that will give me a strap that's roughly 49 inches long. And the best thing to do to figure out the optimum length of a crossbody strap for your purse is to take your measuring tape, place one end on your hip or roughly where you want the top edge of your bag to sit against your hip, run your measuring tape all the way up over your body, around your neck, back down the front and to the other side of your hip where you want the other side of your purse to sit. That's the measurement that you're going for. For me, it's around 49 inches and 131 chains will be approximately what I need in order to get that. Once you have 131 chains or the number you require in order to hit that measurement that goes from your hip around your neck and back down to your hip again, we're just going to half double crochet in each stitch across. So we skip that first chain from the hook, look for the second one, and half double crochet into each chain. Now you can do three rows of half double crochet all in the same color. You can fasten off at the end of your first row and join another color and work a row of half double crochet in it. Um, it's really up to you. You can make your strap 
striped <laughs> or solid color. Either way, you want three rows back and forth of half double crochet. You're going to chain one turn at the end of each row. And if you started with 131 chains like I did, you'll have 130 stitches in each row. I've finished my strap. It is three rows long. Each row is 130 half double crochet stitches. I fastened off and joined a new color for each row. I started with a long tail on my first row, the aqua, and then I finished with white. And because I did three rows, I finished with a long tail over here. And because I'm gonna use the long tails to sew down the edges of my strap to either side of my purse. If you made your strap all one color, then you're just going to need to cut a length of yarn Attach it to either the inside or like the bottom edge of your strap or even the inside of your purse and you're going to use that to sew down the one edge that would not have a long tail left on it. We are using those three stitches that kind of curve around the outside edge. So for that, me that's one, two, three, these three right here. I'm going to start with the outside one, just because that's where the tail is on the edge of my strap. I'm going to sew back and forth using those three stitches and just sewing right through the edge of my strap back and forth a couple times. So I want to make sure that it's on there nice and snug. There we go, that's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to make a quick knot and I'm going to weave the rest of that white yarn in up the underside of the white stitches of my strap. Again, if you were using all one color for your strap, then you're not going to have that issue. You can just weave that, that tail in anywhere you want. Uh, because all of your stitches will be the same color. So you can weave it into the strap or you can weave it in to the purse, whichever is easiest for you. All right, I know that's not going to come out. Then you want to make sure that your strap does not twist on you. And you're going to thread up the other tail and do the same thing on the other side. Now that our strap's on, you can go ahead and make an applique of any kind to satisfy your own personal theme or personality. But I'm going to add a great big toadstool to mine because I just love them. They're so cute and cheerful and I love that red, white and aqua. It is just so sharp and pretty. So this is how I'm going to make my toadstool. I'm going to begin with white. This is the stem part. I'm going to begin with a slip knot. I'm going to chain nine. And I'm going to build a stem. So I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook. I'm going to single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into each of the next two chains. So that's three single crochet all together so far. Half double crochet into the next three chains. I have two chains left. I'm going to double crochet into the next chain. And into that last chain, I'm going to double crochet seven times. Now, if your bottom chain pulls out on you, which is very typical, just leave that little short tail out. We're going to weave it through these stitches later and just cinch it up. We're going to double crochet into the next stitch.
and we're working up the underside of our foundation chain just like we did with the bottom of our purse. We're going to half double crochet into each of the next three stitches and then into the last three we're going to single crochet. And there we go. Leave yourself a nice long tail for sewing your applique piece to your purse. So no matter what applique you might be making, leave a long tail. And we're going to just cinch this little space shut by taking our little yarn tail and weaving it through those bottom seven double crochet stitches. We'll get it through the first few. And then through the last couple there. And then you're just going to sort of cinch it shut. Hold the stitches, pull tightly on that little tail, and it will just cinch that little space closed for you. Then you can weave it up through the rest of the stitches along that row or turn around and weave it back through the same stitches you just pulled it through and that should keep it from coming apart. There we go. And that is the little stem for my mushroom. Let's do a mushroom cap now. We're going to take our red yarn now, start with a slip knot, we're going to chain 13 so that's 13 chains and here we go we're going to skip the first chain from the hook single crochet into the next chain and single crochet into the chain after that we're going to half double crochet into each of the next two chains double crochet into each of the next four chains half double crochet into each of the next two chains and single crochet into each of the last two chains so you've got 12 stitches all the way across. Something that looks like that. We're going to chain one, turn, and we're going to repeat that. Single crochet into each of the first two stitches. Half double crochet into the next two stitches. double crochet into each of the next four stitches so each of these stitches aligns with the stitch just like it from the previous row half double crochet into the next two stitches and single crochet into the last two stitches and that last stitch might be kind of small or squished or kind of curling down the edge. Don't miss it. You still have 12 stitches and you've got a bit of a bow shape happening, a bit of a bump in the middle. Chain one turn. We're going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we're going to change things. We're going to work two double crochet, so two double crochet into each of those four stitches. So we're doubling up the double crochets from the row before. So you'll have eight double crochet in the middle here. And then we return to the familiar pattern, a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches and a single crochet 
in each of the last two stitches. All right, now we have something that looks like this. We're not done yet. We have one more row to go. We are not chaining one and we're not turning. So right from where you are, we're gonna start working down this little side, across the bottom, up the other side, and all the way around the top again. Just single crochet. We're gonna single crochet around the edge of each of those three rows. So you just get your hook in there anywhere you can. Don't worry too much about it. Single crochet in each foundation chain all the way across. The actual stitch count for this little edging row doesn't matter. All you're doing is just smoothing out the edge and making a kind of a constant single crochet stitch all the way around. So we're single crocheting in each foundation chain. I'm just working over top of that little short tail. Then we're not chaining or anything, we're just turning and we're working up the side of the mushroom. And now we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way along the top of the mushroom cap. And this is just gonna smooth everything out. Give it a little bit of a kind of a cartoony look. Remember when you're making appliques, as you sew them down, you're going to sort of sew and reposition, sew and reposition. So if your shape isn't exactly perfect when it's finished being crocheted, you can kind of bend and stretch and tack it into place as you single crochet. So remember that when you're making an applique. Once you get all the way back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch and fasten off leaving a nice long tail for sewing. There we go. And that's the cap. Now it's almost complete. We need to add some of those pretty little white spots that we find on toadstools in magical forests. You can do a few things. You can add little white buttons. You can add little round pieces of white felt by gluing them on. You can crochet little tiny circles, or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna add some French knots. So I'm going to grab a length of white yarn and my needle and get started on that. We're gonna take our yarn needle and a length of yarn. This is for French knots. I have the right side of my mushroom facing up. This is the wrong side of my mushroom. I am bringing my yarn in from the wrong side or the back of my mushroom cap anywhere I want, doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white yarn out the back for knotting later. So a little, little tail, I'll just keep my finger on it for now. And now I'm gonna make a French knot. Now we've done these a few times on the show, but here we go. It helps to work against a flat surface. You are going to Put your finger down nice and tightly on your mushroom cap, making sure that you catch that yarn underneath it so it doesn't want to go anywhere. Wrap your white yarn around your hook eh, three, four, five times. Then you're going to poke it through a part of your mushroom cap, just a, like a loop away from where your yarn came out. You can tug that back down to tighten it up. And then making sure you don't catch your little yarn. Slowly pull that all the way through and you've created a cute little French knot. It's like a little bubble. And depending on how many wraps around your uh, yarn needle you do will determine how long or how wide this gets. So you wanna just keep that tight. The first one's always a bit tricky because you wanna try and manage the tightness of both ends, but once you get one in, it becomes easier to do. Then you just want to kind of randomly bring your needle out in various spots around your mushroom cap. Don't pull too tightly on the bottom because you don't want to pinch your cap. And then you can do it again. I like to wrap maybe three, four, five times around my needle. And I try to hold that as tightly as I can. And just sort of pop over top of one loop and then slowly pull that yarn 
all the way through. And there we go. These make cute little bubbly knots. You can work away at that for a while until you have as many little dots on your mushroom cap as you like. When you're done with your last little speck, you just want to bring your yarn through to the back and find your two ends and knot them together. Not too tight because you don't want to pinch the front of your mushroom cap, but tight enough that they won't come undone. And then you can just trim any ends and it doesn't look, matter how messy it is maybe three or four times just to be sure. It doesn't matter how messy it is on the back because that's not going to show. So I'm just going to trim those two ends now. There we go. And that's the front of my mushroom cap. And now all I want to do is sew down the stem and then sew the mushroom cap down over top of it. So I'm going to position my stem where I want, thread up that long tail, and I'm going to use the top facing loops of my purse so I don't have to sew through into the inside and I also am aware of not sewing through the actual, the whole purse by accident. So I'm just going to see, pick up a loop of the actual purse and then go through the stitch on the stem again not pulling too tight I'm going to stop every once in a while and reposition now remember if you want like a little kind of a jaunty little twist to your stem or if you want it straight or if you want it to kind of bend some one way or the other you can kind of keep repositioning it as you sew it down finish sewing all the way around your stem or whatever piece of applique you're working on you're just going to make sure to knot it once twice whatever you think it needs just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere now the top of my stem is going to be hidden under my mushroom cap so it doesn't have to be super neat and tidy but I want that knot to be nice and tight and then I'm going to just weave my tail in a little bit underneath some of those other stitches on the stem. This will just help to make sure that my uh, yarn tail doesn't want to come undone. But I don't have to weave in the whole thing because I have quite a bit left over. So I know it's not going to want to come out of that. So I'm just going to give it a trim. Careful not to snip my stitches. And now I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the mushroom cap. I'm going to put it in place where I want it, whether I want it kind of on the side or straight or however I want it. And then I'm going to pin it in place if I need to or hold it like I tend to and do the same thing. Pick up the individual loops of the stitches from the purse and then work my way through all of the stitches all the way around my mushroom. When I've finished, I'm going to knot it, weave in the tail, and then that'll be it for my applique. I love it. Very simple strap. It's not too heavy. If you wanted to line it, it's a really easy thing to do. Just create a fabric piece that's about twice the width plus a little bit extra of your purse and just a little bit taller. Fold it in half, stitch it around three sides, fold down the bottom and then just stitch it in around the top opening of your purse underneath where your flap is. And uh, that's only if you feel you need to give it a little bit of an extra lining. I'm probably just going to be using mine for my phone my ID, maybe a credit card, nothing heavy. And um, I think it'll be just fine. But if you felt down the road you needed to line it, it's a super easy thing to do. Um, I hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week. I hope you enjoyed making it out of the 24 seven cotton. Thanks again to Lion Brand Yarns. I love this stuff. I mean, look at this aqua, look at it. It is so beautiful. It's practically illuminated all by itself. I love it. It's got that whole 1950s vibe going on, you know, that bright red, the white, the aqua. 
I love that color combination. Anyway, if you'll excuse me, I have some exploring to do. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye guys. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.